I'm going to talk to you about Bible cover-ups. In Luke 12, 2, it says, For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. You see, many times people do dark things and try to cover them up. And we try to keep them hid in the darkness. But there's not enough dirt to hide it from God. You would run out of dirt. Your arms would get tired digging with that shovel to try to cover it up. If you're looking for things to cover your sin, you would run out before you even get close to the top of it. You see, you think you have secret sin tucked back in the darkest places of your mind, but the Lord sees it. Even if it's like a little needle in a haystack in your brain, the Lord can look right at it, pinpoint it, dig it out, look at it. And you see cover-ups throughout the Bible. Satan conspired against the Lord when he tempted Adam and Eve. And what do Adam and Eve do? They cover it up after they give in to the devil. They tried to cover it up. In Genesis 3, 8, it says, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. You see, they like it under the trees because of the shadow. You know, who wants to have their sin out in the spotlight, in the open? When you do wrong, you most likely you like to hide it and hide yourself. And when you want your sin in the spotlight, this shows you've crossed over into even deeper sin. It's just a very unnatural thing. It shows you've really went very, very far with your sin when you want your sin out in the spotlight. This shows that you're no longer ashamed. And, you know, Paul said, What fruit had ye in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? If you're ashamed of the sin that you're doing, and you don't want it out in the open, and you don't want people knowing about it on Facebook, then you're in a lot better shape than somebody who's out there publishing it. And you see with Hollywood that they don't even really cover up a lot of things anymore. They put it right out in the open on television. They're doing, you know, satanic rituals and worship services right there on live television for everybody to see. In Isaiah 3, 9, it says, The show of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom, they hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. They're no longer ashamed. They declare their sin as Sodom. They have a pride parade. It's sin on parade. And, you know, the, I, I never understood a homosexual pride parade that makes about as much sense as a adulterer pride parade. You know, what if everybody that was out cheating on their wives got a big parade together and said, let's fight for the right to cheat on our wives? What if every uh, person who was into bestiality got together and said, let's, let's go and have a big pride parade for bestiality and show our pride in our sin and our wickedness? What if every serial killer got out there and said, well, let's all get together and have a serial killer pride parade. You know, you shouldn't have pride in your sin. But Adam and Eve, they, they tried to hide. They tried to cover it up. They tried to cover up their nakedness with fig leaves. In Genesis 3, 7, it says, And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. So what did they do? And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Before this, they walked around naked, no problem. But this picture is man trying to cover up his own sinfulness with his own righteousness. That's what the fig tree, the fig leaves represent, your own self-righteousness. And it didn't work. The Lord had to cover them with coats of skins. He had to clothe them with coats of skins. Only the Lord himself can get rid of it. You can't get rid of it. In Job 31, 33, it says, If I covered my transgressions as Adam... By hiding mine iniquity in my bosom. You can't cover it. The Lord sees it. And if you keep trying to cover it, you're just going to get to where you're unashamed and have what the Bible calls a whore's forehead. 
It's going to be written all over your face. You're not going to be ashamed about it anymore. But there's all kinds of cover-ups in the Bible. Rachel, Jacob's wife, tried to cover up the images that she had stolen. You see, she stole away her father's gods, which she shouldn't have had anyway, when she left with Jacob. In Genesis 31, 34, it says, Now Rachel had taken the images and put them in the camel's furniture and set upon them, and Laban searched all the tent but found them not. So she took the gods and hid them in the camel's furniture. She thought she was covering up her sin. But you, you might think you're good at hiding and staying undercover with your false god, your porn, your browsing history, your adulterous text messages. But we know the Lord sees it. We know some of the angels see it. We know that unclean spirits see it. We know the devil sees it. Do you trust all these unclean spirits with your secrets? You know, that, that it says in the book of Ecclesiastes, that, that which hath wings shall tell the matter. You really trust them with that? You're never really alone. There's always somebody watching, even if you think there's not. You know, your mom and your wife may not find anything when they search your tent, just like Laban didn't find his gods that Rachel, Rachel was hiding when he searched her tent, but somebody's going to find it. Somebody's already seen it. You know, it might be covered up under the mat mattress as they used to put the old dirty magazines. It might be in some hidden folder now on your computer. It might be in some hidden folder on your phone somehow, but somebody sees it. You can only cover it up so long. And you have to live with the guilt and the paranoia of getting caught. Why do you want to do that? Why do you want to live with the guilt and the paranoia about getting caught? You're going to be caught eventually, whether in this life or in the life to come. Let's look at another one. When Peter, look at Peter, he, when he denied Jesus Christ, he tried to cover up the fact that he was a disciple. In Matthew 26, 72 through 74, it says, And again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them, for thy speech bereath thee. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. His speech was giving him away. You know, you can only cover up something so far before something about you is going to give it away. It's hard to keep a lie going. You know, you can say things that's out of character or something to try to cover up who you really are. There are people who will try to cover up the fact that they're a born-again child of God, maybe because... They are angry with God, maybe because they are afraid of persecution. Maybe they're trying to fit in. Maybe they want to keep their job. Maybe they want to get a job, a certain job. Maybe because they don't want to be called crazy. Maybe you've tried to cover up the fact that you're a Bible believer or a King James Bible believer and tried to stay undercover with that. Uh, they'll find you out eventually. Just like, you know, Peter, they found him out. In 2 Timothy 2.19, it says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. You might fool some people into thinking that you're not a born-again believer, but the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. You can try to cover up the fact that you're a saint by living in iniquity like the world, but the Lord knoweth them that are his. The devil knoweth them that are his. He knows who he is the father of and who he's not the father of. What about another one? In Genesis 37, Joseph's brothers cover up for what they did to Joseph. They try to cover it up. In Genesis 37, 20, it says, They say, Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit, and we will say some evil beast hath devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. They tried to cover it up. Just like uh, they planned, you know, if Jesus 
really does resurrect, they're going to say the disciples came and got him. They're going to say, you know, we fell asleep and the disciples came and got him. They were going to cover it up. People still doing these same type of cover-ups today. And what did Joseph's brothers, what did they say to their father? When they did, when they put Joseph in that pit and what did they go back and tell their father? It says in Genesis 37, 31 through 33, And they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of the goats and dipped the coat in the blood. And they sent the coat of many colors and they brought it to their father and said, This have we found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. And he knew it and said, It is my son's coat. An evil beast hath devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. And, you know, they didn't send in the forensic team. They didn't send in a canine unit. They didn't put up missing poster to, posters. It, it seemed like the perfect cover-up. They made it look like an evil beast ate up Joseph. <clears throat> they wanted to make it look like the the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ came and stole Jesus away and that he really didn't resurrect. They're always trying to cover up something. If it work, if it's something that's going to work against them, they'll try to cover it up and make it look like something else. If it's something that's working against them, they'll cover it up and make it look like something else. There's always a cover-up. And they cover it up so that, it, that it's going to work in their favor. How many times do people do the same thing today? They kill another man. They make it look like an accident. Maybe they try to make it look like a suicide. Sometimes they'll kill somebody, put them in a house, burn the house down to try to burn up the evidence. Maybe they'll kill somebody, put them in a car, somehow drive the car off a bridge to cover up the murder. But it comes back on Joseph's brothers. Jacob found out what his sons did to his son Joseph. They reaped it. And after the deception, they reaped it through the person that they did this to, through Joseph. Their deception led to them being deceived for a short time by Joseph himself. What about another one? Moses. Moses covered up a murder. In Exodus 2.12, it says, And he looked this way and that way, and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hit him in the sand. You know, he looked around, he saw that there was no man, but he couldn't see unclean spirits. He couldn't see the Lord himself looking. He thought he had it hidden, but the thing was known. You think you've got it hidden, but the thing is known. In Exodus 2, 13 and 14, it says, And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together, and he said to him that did the wrong, Wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. So you can imagine, you know, his, his Adam's apple falling down to his stomach when he hears that guy say that. He said, surely this thing is known. He's freaking out. He's like, I thought that this was hidden. I thought I had this hidden in the sand. You see, somebody may know what you're doing, and you don't even know that they know. The police may be on your trail, and you don't even know that they know. Your wife may be on your trail, and you don't even know that she knows. The best thing to do is stop and get it right and just go on for God, living in all godliness and honesty, not covering anything up, just walking honestly. Moses said, surely this thing is known. And if it isn't known, if what you're doing isn't known, it, it's going to come out one day. I mean, you think about people like the Golden State Killer who thought he got away with murder for about 30-something years, but later got caught because of, you know, the DNA technology stuff and a lot of serial killers have been getting caught that way lately. The serial killer, BTK, he got away with murder for 30 or something years or so, but ended up getting caught. You're going to be found out eventually. Be sure your sin will find you out, whether it be here or whether it be in the afterlife. 
What's another one? David. David tried to cover his sin of adultery. You know, he saw Bathsheba. He saw her bathing. He lusted. And then he took her. He committed adultery with her. Gets her pregnant. And then tries to cover up the pregnancy. You know, he has failed attempts of trying to cover it up. But then eventually kills her husband Uriah to cover up the adultery and a cover-up just leads to more sin and gets you even further in over your head he not only committed adultery but ended up committing murder to cover it up how many times do you see that happening today in proverbs 28 13 it says he that covereth his sins shall not prosper but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy when david acknowledged his sin after the preaching of Nathan the prophet, he found mercy, the sheer mercies of David. Acknowledge your sin, find mercy. The more you just keep trying to hide it, cover it up, and keep doing it, and think you got it all hidden, you got every angle covered, you're just counting mercy out. What's another one? The self-righteous, filthy rags of a sinner. That's a cover-up. The Pharisee said in Luke 18, 12, he said, I fast twice in a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. That's nothing more than a cover-up. False prophets. That's another cover-up. What do they put on? Sheep's clothing. What you see in churches today on the internet today is nothing but a bunch of wolves in sheep's clothing. And I could just sit and name them off. All these wolves in sheep's clothing. False prophets cover up their motives with fair speeches. In Romans 16, 17, and 18, it says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. In Second Peter 2, 3, it says, And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. And you see, it's not just a Joel Osteen that, you know, everybody uses him as a, as a good illustration. And obviously, he's a good illustration because, you know, what does he have? A smile on his face to cover up his devilment and good words and fair speeches to cover up his deception but it could also be taken the other way where you got somebody that's extremely hard on sin kind of cocky with a attitude kind of mean in a way to where you know they're going to get the other people you know you got some people out there they're not into the joel osteen type stuff so they're not going to be deceived by his type of feigned words they're going to be deceived by somebody who's more rug rugged and mean and deceives in that way and they'll be like well this guy he's just so against sin he just is so fed up with the things of the world and you can tell by how he talks that he is the real deal and they'll swallow his false gospel. You take men like Geno Jennings, who he's real hard on sin, takes a good stand against sin, and he gets the other people. He's going to get the ones that aren't deceived by Joel Osteen. He's going to get the ones who are looking for hard preaching against sin. But he's going to shove that false oneness water baptism false gospel in there and deceive all these people with his feigned words with his um, charisma and all this funny jokes that he may have and maybe he's a gifted speaker and that's just going to help him deceive more people it's all a cover-up <clears throat> what's another one judas covered his betrayal with a kiss in Mark 14, 44, it says, And he that betrayeth him had given them a token, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same as he, take him and lead him away safely. Now, that's a cover-up. You don't just come up and kiss somebody that you're betraying. That's a cover-up. You're trying to deceive somebody. Don't try to put on a front like you're for Jesus Christ, 
when you're really just for yourself and the world and what you can get and for the devil, even though you may not know it, that you're for the devil. There's all kinds of people pretending to be for the Lord Jesus Christ, but they're not for the Lord Jesus Christ at all. They're using him to just prop themselves up, make him, themselves look better, trying to see what they can get out of the ministry. Because there can be a whole bunch of money in the ministry, getting into the ministry or something, or in being a, a pastor of a church, and you get a whole bunch of people and get all this money. There can be a lot of money in that because you're using feigned words. You're pretending to kiss the son, but you're really spitting in his face. You're really pulling out his beard. You're really just like those people that hung him on the cross, really. You're not for him. You're against him. But you have a sin problem, and you can't cover it up. There's only one thing that can cover it, and that's the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You've tried everything else. You've tried deception. You've tried your good works. You've tried just acting like it's not there. There's only one thing that can cover it, and that's the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it just doesn't cover it. It actually gets rid of it. It washes it away completely. Ephesians 1.7 says, On whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. It's not water baptism that saves, like people like Geno Jennings says, who's out there with this false gospel saying that, you know, you got to be baptized in Jesus' name only. And if you're not bab water baptized in Jesus' name only, then you're not saved. He's spreading this false gospel that you can't be saved by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to be water baptized in Jesus' name only. So it's not only up to you, it's up to a man baptizing you, saying these magic, the magic right words while he's baptizing you. Complete nonsense, false gospel. You're not saved by that. You're saved by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. The moment you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you're baptized into the body of Christ, and it has nothing to do with the water baptism. 